for remotely. Okay, thank you for that. Um, let's see, public participation guidelines. Members of the public wishing to participate in the meeting must see their full, must state their full Zoom. No, sorry, let me start again. Um, Members of the public wishing to participate in the meeting must use their full name for Zoom access. If full names are not used, people will not be able to allow to be participate in the discussion. The town reserves the right to remove any member of the public from the meeting who doesn't use a full name. Well, I've never really listened to this. Um, Confirming member access. Okay, as a preliminary matter, this is to identify the meeting manager, chair, support staff, et cetera. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Um, when I call your name, please say here. Um, Diane. Here, here. Thank you. John. Is John here? I don't see his picture. John is not here. Um, okay. Uh, Ray obviously isn't here, so uh, that's a no. And um, Val? No, Val. You have Carrie and Stephen. Oh, thank God. Okay, um, Stephen? Yes. Oh, good. Thank you for showing up here. And Carrie? Uh, yep. Okay, great. Okay, and uh, staff members, let's see. Um, I guess Kadeem, I don't see Kadeem. No, okay. Um, Holly's here. Present. Thank you. And um, what about, is it Esmeralda? It is, yeah. I'm here. Oh, hi. Hi, Esmeralda, good. Hello. I'm glad you're here. Esmeralda. And uh, anticipated speakers on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. Okay, we don't do that. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good anytime. Yay. This open meeting of the uh, HCC is being conducted remotely pursuant of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. For this meeting, HCC is convening by video conference, Zoom app, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do it through the chair, taking care to identify yourself for items with the public comment. I guess we'll get to that. After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment. Oh, here it is. To those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom, Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and acknowledge by the chair. Finally, each vote to be taken in the meeting will be conducted by roll call. Um, please note that the meeting is being recorded and that the attendees are participating by video. Accordingly, please be aware of other folks may be able to see your screen. Take care not to screen share. All supporting material that has been provided by the members of this body are available for the town website. Unless otherwise noted, the public is encouraged to follow along using posted agenda unless I, the chair, notes otherwise. Meeting business rule ground rules. We are now turning to the first item. Well, we're going to item of the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for the effective and clear conduct of the business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. For Terry Norton, our minute taker. I, the chair, will introduce each speaker of the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each to provide comment, questions, motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking, and please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps it's generate accurate minutes. Um, for any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. Um, do I hear a motion to confirm this agenda? So moved. Thank you, Stephen. Um, 
Mm. Uh, public comment? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Um, on that motion, Diane. Aye. And Carrie. Aye. And myself. That's it. Okay. That motion passes. Madam uh, Chair, um, John is joining right now. So oh, you know. great. Great. So John is here. Terrific. Um, uh, let's see. So we already passed that, though. So let's go to the consent, which there are any. I make a motion, unless somebody has to withdraw, I make a motion to approve the consent. There's no consent. Where it, yeah, I don't see any. There's no I consent to no consent. A consent to no consent. And right. on new business, I... So uh, let so consent with conditions are not, and then okay, here we go. Thank you. Um, the first, the first uh, one thirteen Madiket Road. Greg Kelts is Greg here. Greg Kelts. Greg, you're muted. Yeah, here, here I am. Yes, thank you. Can you okay. hear me? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Would you? Look, okay, here we go. Would you like to um, tell us what you're doing here? Um, the property has is being sold to the land bank. Part of the contract that I signed with the land bank 12 years ago is that I would remove the shed. So I'm um, before you to remove the permission to remove the shed through demo. I've had several people look at it. Nobody really is interested. It was originally built for my wife when we lived at the end of Madiket Road. So that would have been about 20 years ago. It is... Uh, minimal construction. It has electricity, but no heat, no septic, no water. It was something she would go out just to house her loom and to weed. When we purchased this property, we moved the shed to the property. We're now in town on York Street, no more space available. And so this is just for a demolition of this shed, correct? Correct. Okay, that sounds pretty simple. Yeah. Um, what what to, are you done, um, Gregory? Yes, I am. Unless somebody has questions. Okay. Um, uh, what's the feeling of the board, Stephen? Would you like to start? Uh, yeah, I mean, given the fact that it's not a uh, dwelling, it doesn't, to my awareness, have historic significance. It's not visible from the street and no one is interested in it, uh, given testament Greg has provided, I would be um, obliged to make a motion to approve as submitted. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Diane, on the motion. I approve. I, and, yes. Uh, Carrie. I'm with him. And John? John, I can't see you on my computer. Are you there? I don't see them any longer. Oh, okay. Well, that passes anyway. So um, thank you very much, Gregory. Thank that. you. Have a good rest of the day. You too. Thanks. Let's see. 20 Cannonberry. Is someone here to represent this? Hi, Madam Chair. My name is Irina. I'm from Workshop APD. Um, I'm here to represent 20 Cannonberry. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, so this structure is on Canterbury Lane down in Sconset. Um, it's similar to some of the other houses that we've done in the area. Um, it is, uh, there's a future, or the, where this is the house um, as the first application. Um, it has white windows and white trim, uh, exposed rafter tails and along the front porch and rest of the fascia um, and 
let me know if you have any additional questions. Oh, very nice. Um, okay, let's go down the line again. Thank you for that presentation. Um, Madam Chair, I do have SAB comments for your consideration. Oh, thank you, Holly. You're welcome. So uh, Concept Advisory took a look at this on Monday and their concerns are at 31 feet plus, the chimney is overly tall with fan, conduit and metal mesh for a gas fireplace. Color of painted brick not specified on the plans. And I would also concur on the height of the chimney to possibly reduce that in height. Um, but overall, I do uh, concur that the this plan has been before you all uh, previously in the subdivision. Those are comments, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'll go if you want. I'd love that, Diane. Okay. Uh, uh, somebody, can I get the height of the building? 26.2. 26.2? Okay, to the ridge. Yeah. Oh, no, right. wait. No, sorry, 2711, because 262 is to the first floor. So it's 2711, almost 28. Okay. I feel it may be too tall to be in there. It's, it's, the chimney has to be redesigned. So it looks like a normal chimney. We, I don't think, and I've seen a lot of chimneys here, we've ever had uh, whatever that is in the middle. Um, I don't know that the trim around the house is white. I, I believe that was stated. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think under the circumstances down where they are, the chimney should be painted. It doesn't fit in to my thoughts. And um, I'd like to see it reduced in, in height. To, I don't know whether some of the buildings out there are 27, but uh, we'll see what the heights are around in the proposed area. I can't remember them all. And the uh, under the under the three windows on the little right hand side, what is that? It looks like. Um, as a walkout, you see the lad, the stairs going down mm -hmm. to the second floor. But what are all those uh, lines? Are they wood? Is it a wood that fence? It doesn't, correct. It doesn't it's look a, like a picket. Is it a picket? It is a wood fence um, over a walkout to the basement. And as an added clarification for the fireplace, the intent is kind of a whitewashed paint. Well, I'm telling you what I would like. That's all. I'm not, I am making a thing. I think that should, if that is a fence going down to protect the stairs and you're having white trim, I think you should have a picket fence going along there. Uh, and on the roof, it's a shingle roof, wood type shingle. And, Correct. and where are the painted columns? They are along the porch. Oops. Oh, wait a minute. I see it goes around the corner. Okay, and the the uh, roof is is a shingle roof, a wood shingle roof. Correct, red cedar shingles. Okay, because you have two kinds. If, if you have the cross bucks uh, on the left-hand side, you should not have that fence on the right hand side do cross bucks or a white picket fence which goes along with the trim of the windows anyway that's my thing for the moment thank you okay thank you diane uh, Stephen. okay so yeah i agree the chimney could come down uh the bottom of the corbeling no taller than three foot above the um ridge would satisfy code. The um, I agree with Diane. I think the idea of the baluster, vertical balusters, and the crossbucks visually are. I'd love to, except I have a, I'm in a Zoom. 
I agree completely. <laughs> Whoever made that comment. Um, <laughs> I, I think that, that the, those compete unnecessarily and there might be some different ways to do it. It may just be that, uh, and perhaps this is going to happen anyways, Arena, you have foundation plannings that will be to the street side of the balustrade going into the basement. So that might be something if you volunteer. Right. Okay. And then um, if we could scroll down to the next elevation. Thank you. Um, this is consistent with what's out there. I think lowering that chimney will make a big difference. And then the next elevation, please. Yeah, uh, no concerns here other than the chimney comment. And then the next. Could, sorry, could we, um, oh boy. Could we mute those people? Thanks. Um, and then the comment again would be the chimney. Uh, with respect to the height, I get it. Um, I think that one of the things that is a saving grace on, on this structure is the, with respect to height, is that it is really a story and a half. Um, and I think as it presents going down the street, it will not present as a full two-story five bay that it, the ridge height is this tall. So I think that the mitigating factor is the fact that there are dormers on one and a half stories. So I'm okay with that. And I would suggest with respect to painting the chimney or whitewash uh, that that could always come in as a um, maybe a, an amendment or a modification um, at a later date once this has been built. And if so, I would suggest to bring along some images of the white chimneys on Low Beach Road. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Carrie. Um, I agree with the others. I. I'd like to see the opposite elevation to this one because there are some, um, that's on the back right there, right? That's not visible from the road. I'm just wondering if that side elevation, I'm not even sure which side it is, but the other, yes, this one. Um, I'd like to see that in relationship with the, low, or the site plan because I think all those individual full size door, they just all look very contemporary in this very traditional house. Um, and I think those should be reduced to windows, not individual door scale windows. Some of them are doors, which is fine, but um, can I see this, the site plan? Carrie, which elevation is that on? It's on the end elevation. Oh, okay. I see it's it's not even going to be visible, so it really doesn't matter. Um, okay. It's on, yeah, it's on the, I guess that's the south if we're looking at the plan, um, but it'll be hidden by the garage. So that that negates that. But I, I just agree with the others on their comments. That's it. Oh, good. Um, John. Is, is Madam John Chair, it looks like John has actually left. Okay. And um, so we heard from Stephen, Diane, Carrie, and myself. Um, so I, yeah, I don't mind the reduction in the chimney and um, there is some precedence for large windows. There's a one house on uh, Ocean Ave, Swallow's Nest that has really long windows, windows down. down. So I think, so I think, I think I there is a bit, I'm okay with those windows. Um, I agree about the comments of, of the uh, cross bucks, one or the other. And I, we don't usually do walk walk downs like on the front of a house. Um, so I think that has to be screened. Um, and I think, I don't know if anybody has any comments about that further, um, but that's, I remember that is not usually done. Um, so what do we want to do with this? I'll make a motion. Okay, I'll I make a motion, Madam Chair. Thank you, Stephen. Could you try that? So reduce. <clears throat> reduce the chimney height through staff, reduce the chimney height to three, three foot mm -hmm. from ridge to bottom of the corbel, uh, natural brick. Um, the balusters will either be cross bucked or they will be screened, not visible at time of inspection. And um, while I'm sensitive to the comment that Carrie had made about the windows on the um, side elevation, I think those will not be visible. I agree with her there. So I'm gonna leave those as they are. So the motion is reduce the, the chimney height 
and um, screen the um, and not to be painted and to screen the balustrade. The 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 the, the, with the walk down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I can I ask Steve if he would add one thing? Yeah, yeah please. Go, go to the chimney, whatever that circle is up there at the top. I think it would be good if it was just a plain chimney. Uh, can I just get a clarification? We'll hold the motion uh, through you, Madam Chair. Sure. Arena, what is that? Could we zoom in on the uh, chimney, the upper portion of the chimney? So that is a kind of concealed front to it, um, similar to a detail we did um, at Hawthorne, the Hawthorne Park development, where the um, flu vent is concealed on the interior of it rather than at the top. And Arena, is that is that a um, barged material? Is it a brick material? It, what do we see? I believe there's a bit of um, metal mesh in front of it. Okay, yeah, uh, I didn't find that but, objectionable yeah. at the Hawthorns. Thank you, sorry to interrupt. Um, so I'm okay with it as it is. I have seen that detail at their other projects. Okay. Um, if it was a circle, then I think it would be a very foreign element but it's a rec rectilinear form that is, it blends into the chimney face. Can I ask uh, through, uh, through myself, I guess, um, <laughs> is, uh, it, it, it could, the, could that be on a uh, inside or the back or does it have to be on the front of the house? Could the three other sides, it could be on. I believe it's currently on the, the two smaller faces here, the front and the back, but we could definitely explore doing it on the sides. Um, yeah, uh, well, do you, want to, do, do you want to put that in your motion, Stephen, to, to I, keep it off the front of the house? Or I'm a little concerned. Can we go to the next elevation down? Abby, I totally get you, but I think it's going to actually be a, a, it will become an architectural element on the side because you see how wide it will be. It'll be about the better part of two and a half feet wide and this on the, this elevation and the opposite because the chimney is wider. Mm, okay. Well, let's let's uh, try your motion. Um, we've got um, uh, Diane on the motion. No. no. Okay. Carrie Car on the motion. I want to clarify that the chimney is brick, not painted, and then I'm an I. Yeah, that's my motion. Yeah, it's, it's 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 brick not painted, right? Um, yeah, so I'm an I. So um, could I see the front elevation again? I just want to make sure I don't get this wrong for myself. Um, the... I mean, just just to clarify, what we often will see is that the not often, not every chimney, a traditional wood burning doesn't have this, but that would just be an open space. Um, oh. which actually draws your eye to it, in my opinion, more because you see the sky through it. You see like a blue flicker through this small bit of brick. And then the proportions are kind of odd because the width is, the side elevations are deeper or wider. So I'm just, the reason I said I made the motion I did is I think that ultimately based on what I've seen, this would be the least objectionable and certainly visually acceptable once it's built. Mm. Yeah, I... But what makes it what makes it acceptable more than just a plain chimney? I don't understand because this has some sort of grate in the front of it. Well, they that well. There's two things. One, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, but just I've been asked. Go ahead, so, go ahead. the practical aspect of it is these types of chimneys typically require a cross ventilation for drafting. So there's going to be some type of a opening, and the question is, do we have it on the thinner side or the fatter side? And then the question becomes. Is it something where you see through it and you see sky or you see the um, the muted metal? And what I've seen at Hawthorne is the muted metal is less objectionable than the muted metal in this particular configuration. Hmm. Well, yeah, I'm not I'm not advocating one way or the other. I just want to be clear. Yeah. And yeah, why no, I made my thank decision. You, thank you, Stephen, for that. I, I personally, I, you know, I guess I'm, I'm the one the deciding factor because we've got, you know, there are only four of us here. I, I would prefer to see it going the other way on the longer side and, and take it off the front of the house. So, 
I'm afraid that fails, but do you want to try another one? Um, I would make a motion to um, modify the same, same as the previous motion, except for um, the, yeah, no, sorry. Can't do it. It's really going to be objectionable on the side. I, I really can't support that. I would just make a motion to approve it uh, with no painted brick, the chimney height lowered to three feet from the ridge to the top of the corbling, the balustrade screened, and no opening. And they can come back with some pictures, I think, to make their case about the whitewash and the opening, um, as opposed to having that large expense of metal on the side. Okay, so, so, so let me just, you so said you're leaving it up to them to come up with a different solution than it is a portrait. Yeah, they get their house approval, they can come back on the chimney, but for now the chimney will be okay. unpainted brick with no opening. Okay, very good. Um, on Stephen's motion, uh, Diane. Uh, on that motion, I would say aye. And uh, Carrie. Aye. And myself, aye. That's And passive. I'm an aye. Thank and thank you, Stephen, for that motion. Very good. Okay, thank you. Um, the next structure is the garage for this lot. So the primary visibility would be on the east and north face off of Canterbury Lane. Oh, um, apologies, this site plan uh, didn't, doesn't show the garage. Uh, it was on the previous, if you can flip back to the house plan, um, but it has similar details to the house, um, white windows um, and trim, natural door, and similar detailing at the fascia with the rafter tails. Hmm. Very good. Um, thank you, Irina. Madam Chair, I have comments from Sab. Oh yeah, please, thank you. Their concerns on, they looked at this on uh, Monday. The concerns on the uh, garage is the building is higher than it needs to be. It could be br brought down a foot or more. The side access door is perhaps too dressy for the type of uh, architecture. A general note, many if not most of the new construction applications in recent years have shown parking and garages in front of the main houses. This trend is an unfortunate one in that cars shouldn't become the primary visual aspect between the street and an otherwise nicely designed home. So that was just a comment. Um, those are the comments, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Um... Could we see the, that 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 uh, site plan again? I wanted to see how this worked. Out. I see what you're saying. I'm here. Okay, John. Good. Um, did you hear the uh, ap applicant talk about the garage? Yes. Yes. Would you like to comment? Well, I comment. No, I uh, from, from what I've seen and from what I know. I just drove by there again this morning. Um, I, I, I have no problem with the application. Great, okay, thank yeah, you. John. I think it's suitable for the neighborhood. Okay, very good. Um, Carrie. Um, I have no problem with this either. I do agree with HDAB though. It would be nice to not have these structures in the front. It is set to the side a bit and the driveway opening will be you know, the visibility of the house, but um, this is such a cute little building. I don't think cool. it makes that big of a difference. All right, All right very good, uh, Stephen. Okay. Yeah, could we just zoom in a little bit and get a shot on the north elevation? I'd like to get, yeah, I think it could come down six inches without affecting anything. So basically 16.6. Um, I agree with the comments. I would point out, I think it's important to note that um, I I mean, personally would rather see one car in the garage and see two in the front versus three. Um, there are, I think, outside of town proper um, and on larger lots, certainly, or and even some of the smaller ones um, in the 10,000 and 20,000 square feet. A garage on the front is not really uncommon as a separate building. I think my concern would be if this were attached to have it be forward of the main structure. So I just wanted to clarify my concern on that. Um, otherwise I'm good with it. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Diane. Well, it comes in at a, a good height. I'd like to see it dropped down, as they say. Um, I don't know with what they got. We haven't, I don't know that they brought the pool to us. I too would rather see it instead of having all the parking in the front of the house and the driveway coming in and the garage on Canterbury Lane. But if it's not possible to do, that's one thing I, I however, would like to have them think about if they could move it to the side beyond the house down where you have a room for a driveway. I think we're losing some of our usual things we try and follow. That's all. Yeah, thank you, Diana. Okay, I am on your computer. They appear to be on number two or number um could that person mute themselves? Thank you. Um, I, I agree what's been said. Uh, I think it sound, sounds like everybody was concerned about the amount of cars in front of the house and obscuring this, this really sort of nice design. And, um, you know, at least reduce the driveway to just two cars. Um, so, and reduce the height. So I agree with that, what's been said. Um, I'll make a motion if you want. Uh, so this is just for the garage right now, is that correct? Yeah. And not the landscaping. Okay, so um, yes, Diane, what is your motion? I'd make them my, do my mild minor provisions of reducing the parking outside in front of the garage by one, having it a place for two cars and <coughs> Seeing the possibility of dropping the garage, guest house, whatever you want to call it, down further on the on the site. So what you see from the street is the front of the house without the garage and cars parked. Hmm. Well, um, I'm not sure. Isn't the uh, parking going to be in the landscape? Or that's not part of this application? I don't know. That's what I said earlier. I don't know because they don't say what's part of the... Could landscape. we clarify that, Holly? Uh, is the um, parking part of the landscape and the pool, and et cetera? Your parking and your landscape, yes, that has not come in. The only thing yeah. that you've seen so far is the primary dwelling in this garage. Okay, so it's just the garage, Diane. Um, but let me, was that a motion for revisions? Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, on the motion, uh, John. Aye. And Stephen. Um, uh, respectfully, no. Because you thought we could pass it? Well, yeah, but there's across the street and down three lots, there's a two-story garage that we just approved. So I'm having a difficult time yeah. reconciling how we're holding this one up when it's actually a shorter, more, but I'm a no respectfully. That's all. I'm not right, right. making just, a case for it. I just wanted it. to know why. Um, okay. Um, Carrie? I agree with Steven. Okay. Um, I also think this is ready to be passed. So um, I'm a no as well. Um, I don't think it's that egregious. So um, could, should we try an approval um, through staff by reducing the ridge height by um, six to 12 inches? That would make no difference to the building, but a difference to the ridge height, obviously. Right, and and we see more house. I th I like that. So um, so on uh, Carrie's motion, uh, Stephen. Aye. John. Aye. And Diane. Aye. And myself. That's an aye. Okay, so that passes. Thank you, Arena. Thank you so much. <laughs> Washington. Just a door? Mm -hmm. That's, this That's all they want. 
I may, Madam Chair, this is Esmeralda. I have not received any HTC submission for 15 uh, Washington Street, so I'm not sure if they've withdrawn the project. And I don't think I see anyone here from BPC as okay. well. Too. Oh, I make a motion to hold uh, 15 Washington Street for representation. Thanks, Diane. Steve, on the motion. Aye. Carrie. Aye. John. Aye. And myself, that's an aye. So hold for representation on that. 38 prospect, lot 29. Is Linda here? Madam Chair, again, this application was opened at Tuesday's meeting and I believe it's being held for revisions or for more information. Okay, okay, do I hear a motion to hold this for? Um, Make a motion to hold 38 Prospect Street, Lot 29. For, okay, on the motion. Uh, uh, Stephen. Aye. And John. Aye. Carrie. Aye. And myself as an aye. So holding that one, new dwelling by Emeritus. Is Matt I'm, here? I'm here, Madam Chair. Okay. Okay. Ma Madam Chair, again, sorry, Esmeralda. Um, a, uh, Sab was not able to review this application, so they requested if they can hold it for them to review it, but it's up to you. Um, well, I think since we're here, um, we maybe we don't pass it, but could we just uh, to do what to do? Um, I, I'd like to ask that we review it, Madam Chair. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Um, yes, thank you. I, that'll give us some, um, you know, something to start on here. I appreciate that. Um, I know it's uh, it could be difficult for the, some of the boards to come together, but I've run into that where they, they'll kind of hold it. So I appreciate the feedback. Um, okay, so with your permission, um, Madam Chair, yeah, I can you, get started. Start with the, the with the locust plan so we, we can get a thing on this. Thank you. Oh, holy smoke. It's just actually, um, so the, the only the blue section highlighted is the actual lot. Um, the GIS, when you typed in, we type in Windsor, it highlights all the lots on Windsor, but the blue um, parcel is, is, is the only thing that we're uh, building on. Oh, very good. Does everybody know where this is then? Uh, by Scott's the it by course? the golf course. Yep. Yep. It and so it's, it's, um, it's at what the did I there. win? I'm uh, sorry, Matt. <laughs> one, uh, Christmas tree at Moore's End Farm. Eight awesome. I'll five. collect later. Sorry to interrupt, Matt. Sorry. No worries. So yeah, <laughs> no, that's exactly where it is, and it's uh, it's also accessible at the end of uh, Plainfield Road. So it's it's tucked pretty far uh, back there. So um, the parcel itself, uh, you can see the shape and uh, delineation of it, and we've kind of pushed the house really towards uh, the back of the property. Uh, there isn't a, a budding uh, wetland. You know, we're outside the hundred foot. Uh, setback, but um, I just think it's worth pointing out that the structure is uh, pretty far back from the road. Um, so having said that, we can just jump to the elevations. If we jump to sheets uh, A 2.1, uh, east elevation. Uh, so this is what would be, I suppose, visible from the road, but honestly, it's going to be so far back from the road. I don't know how visible this will be, but having said that, um, we tried to keep the structure fairly simple, um, integrate additive massing, create a primary uh, mass, which is a gable forward. Uh, we've got cottage corners, two over twos, uh, fairly straightforward, simple uh, rake detail. Um, tried to not be overly ornate with this structure. Um, obviously the house uh, kind of builds itself towards the back of the property and, and opens itself up to uh, a rear yard and, and uh, eventual pool. Uh, but we tried to keep the fenestration uh, on the east elevation, um, the portion visible to the road fairly minimal. Um, the rest of the structure, I'd say, is pretty self-explanatory. We do have a covered porch on the back side. Um, you can see in the south elevation, um, this was a response to, we had done a house or a few houses where I think that the board had asked us to try to simplify things and 
Um, you know, we do have that continuous uh, ridge line. It is a one story elevation. For whatever reason, I thought it was actually cleaner, simpler. It's on the back of the building. I don't think it's really visible. Um, so fairly straightforward. Um, so with that, Madam Chair, I look forward to the comments from the board. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Um, on this application, anybody want to jump in? Um, okay. okay, Carrie, go. I think the setting of this building, I think all of it is um, appropriate. The one piece that I think should drop a little bit more for massing on the front um, is the, the, the rightmost piece. I think that should think that, yeah, the eave line should not be the same as the middle piece. It should all drop a bit because it just seems like it's not um, additive enough, but that's the only thing. And I think even just a foot would do it. If the eave line and everything else could just drop a foot, it would make a humongous difference. Mm. But other than that, that's it. Thank you, Carrie. Yes, Stephen. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Yeah, I agree with uh, Carrie's comments and I, Commissioner Thornwell, and I would suggest, can we look at the, um, what would it be, the south elevation, the north? Uh, Matt, that's not going to be visible from Plainfield, right? No. Okay, because um, if it was, could, I would. We could look at I was just going to suggest if it was just to step that down as you did the porch area step it down one as you did with the tertiary mass from the other elevations but if it's not going to be visible i don't want to mess around with it okay <clears throat> i mean if you want to look at the locust i tend to think that things aren't visible but might as well just look at it i don't think so no mm -hmm. no way from Plainfield. No. yeah no i don't think it yeah. will be either no. okay Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, John. Can I see the front, please? Front door. Oh, I and forgot to do that. Okay. Uh, what is the height of this, please? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, the height of the structure is 2711, so 28 feet. Okay. All right. No comment. Thank oh, great. you. Great. Thank I, you, I have a question when everyone finishes, Madam Chair. Uh, go. Why don't you pop it in now? Okay. Uh, just informational, Matt. You, there's no grade changes proposed, correct? Uh, no. We uh, actually, um, if you look at the uh, site plan, we did put the existing topo in there. You know, honestly, there probably might be, we usually put in the application in a situation like this, plus or minus six inches, but we actually intentionally shifted it towards the back of the property, multiple reasons, but one of the other convincing reasons was it's the flatter portion of the lot. You can see that there's a little bit more topographic change towards the front. So, um, you know, I would say, I think on the application, we put plus or minus six inches. So nothing, okay, and if, nothing more than that. And if any grade is raised, it will be from the front of the structure to the back, not to raise the overall structure up relative to the street. Correct. I mean, we okay. usually will pitch, pitch the grade away just for- yep. you know, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a six, six inches for the first 10 feet. Yep, no problems. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, great. Um, Diane? No, I'm, I'm fine with it the way it is. Okay. Uh, that's that's great. Um, I, I actually agree with Carrie on that far right mass on the front. Um, and I, I would like to see the that that long ridge line drop just after the chimney. I hate to say it, but um, that would be my feeling. Could could we just look at that together? The there's the front of the house. I like that dropped that far right mass, and then could we see the rear telescoping back um, with the porch? Yeah, I, I think. I mean, if uh, I could, Madam Chair, is, yeah, um, yeah. so we can drop that front mass by um, 12 inches. And uh, as far as the back is concerned, I mean, I don't think it's going to be overly visible. But uh, again, it, it, 
Yeah. yeah so I, I'd I prefer to keep it yeah. just because it's a little bit cleaner, but uh, hmm. really, definitely in the front, I could drop that um, 12 inches, no problem. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm just I'm just thinking ahead. I, I I know we're not supposed to talk about this, but I see that this has always been in the making. It was going to be developed at some time, and I'm just thinking ahead to what is is probably going to be uh, built out, and eventually everything shows. So I'm just on the side of caution. Um, Here's your. Uh, so, but I, it seems minimal. Um, I have one question yeah, before go, I go, make go. a motion. Yeah. So on the west elevation, please. Uh, top. Uh, actually, I'm looking at a different sheet, but. Um, okay. Wait a minute. In eight. Matt, on your cover sheet, your west and your uh, east are reversed, or on this sheet, your west and your east are reversed. Um, but in any event, um, no, it's fine. I'm just looking at it. So this shows up as the east on the um, cover sheet. And is this shown as the west on this one? Yeah, I think the cover sheet might be incorrect. I apologize. No, it's fine. So I guess, could we go to the e uh, could we go to the east? Yeah, this one. And if we could get the left to right view in. So I just want to ask Matt, uh, as if you're making your right mass, that kind of tertiary mass lower uh, with respect to the eave, um, uh, I would, if in making a motion, I would give you the option to make the leftmost mass slightly lower without coming back if you determine that you want to do that. Because I think currently they look very similar. The one on the left, does, I'm not suggesting it has to be moved down, but uh, in a motion, yes, thank you. I would make a motion that that can also be lowered without prejudice as an option for you, because I think when you're looking at this as an overall, you might say, oh, gee, that one should come down a little too if you have room. If you don't have room, you don't have room, so you're not going to change it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to make a motion to approve through staff subject to the rightmost mass being lowered between six inches and a foot at the eave. Um, and the ridge and the um, on the left, the option to do the same with the small mass. Yes. Um, on Stephen's motion, um, Carrie. Aye. Uh, Diane. Aye. John. Aye. And myself, I'm an I, and I would, I think a, a foot would be um, appropriate on that. We, we'll do a foot. Yeah. Okay. So foot. I think it looks a little heavy on the right. Um, yeah, so that passes. Good job. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Matt. Twenty six Washington, move off demo CWA. Is CWA here? Yep, I'm here. How's it going? Great, good, Amy. Good to see mm -hmm. you. All right. So this application is to renew a previous approval for either a move off or a demo of the existing structure. Um, it was previously approved in two thousand seventeen. Um, so pretty straightforward, and we are planning on the advertising it for someone to take it. You said this is a move off demo. Yeah, and this structure was built in 1950, so it's not historic or anything. Oh, that hey, wait uh... a second! I was born in 1950. Are you <laughs> suggesting you're historic or or <laughs> otherwise <laughs> antiquated? I don't think so, Abby. I'm a fossil. No, oh, no, no, no. Madam well, Chair, I do have comments for yeah, your consideration. Holly, yeah, um, so yes, th there was actually understanding that this was this is coming to you all as kind of like a renewal of a demo move, but obviously demo moves are very important. Um, don't take them lightly. And um, there was no historic information included in the application. NHL data does indicate that it is a circa 1950s contributing structure to the old historic sure. district. Um, obviously, just to remind everybody that um, contributing structures or structures that um, 
contribute to the old historic district's sense of time, place, and historic development, understanding that the entire island is a local district, not just a national historic landmark. Um, the HSAB did take a look at this this on Monday, and they had mentioned that sections of this building are likely over 100 years old. The history of this building and original date of construction should be determined before approving a demolition uh, and sandboard maps should be provided. And again, I, I concur with that. There was lack of information. Yes, understanding that there was a previous approval. However, I want to remind that that was a previous board, different board, um, and this information should be provided for you all to make a clear determination. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Holly. That's that's good things to remember. Um, Could we could we see a lot a plot plan? Yeah. Which which is it? Right there. Uh. And after after Diane's with that, could we see a locust too? Because I I can't place this. I can't in. either. It's tucked in. But I live. Oh. Okay, why does so? It's just before uh, the Legion Hall, and um. Oh, it's the house has a parking space. Mm -hmm. We've done this before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Diane, do you want to continue your comments? Yeah, I, I would I would like to renew the thing. Uh, this went on for quite a long time before. One person wanted it torn down, the other person didn't want to. There's a large tree in, in that that they would have to work around. It is a town tree. And uh, it, maybe we should have a view of it so we know what it looks like and wh what it's going. If old parts of it, hundred years old, I I would care first of all to see what they're proposing to go in there because that is one of that's certainly in our purview that says in the old historic district we have to know what's going in before we move anything. So that is just asking for what they are proposing, but I think a view would be good. Yeah, and that application is actually on the agenda. Um, we'll probably get to it on Tuesday at this point, but that has been submitted for. Okay. Okay, uh, well, I, I, I can't say move it without seeing what's going in there. So they should, two should be together. Okay. Should have been together. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Diane. Stephen. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing a view. I'm I'm kind of familiar with the structure. I I walk when I walk, I walk by there. Um, and since the uh replacement proposal is on the agenda for Tuesday, I think that would work out. Um, I'd suggest that if we get to a motion that maybe we would have this move to Tuesday um, to just prior to the next application. The other thing I just want to point out is I'm, you know, I'm looking at the um, prior approval. It was in 2017 and I'm sensitive. I would like to get some additional historic information on the structure, but I'm also, um, you know, I'm of, uh, I'm of two minds of on this. Um, this was approved in 2017. Um, so it would have expired during COVID. So it would actually be renewable under the COVID freeze. But um, three of the members who sat and signed are currently members. So um, my point is in that is that I'm a little bit leery of reversing decisions of prior commissions. And I'm not just speaking on this particular one. I'm just making a general comment. Our policy has always been that if a prior commission had approved something, um, that it it would be approved. And the other side of the mind on that is that if there's new information or evidence, um, if in fact it wasn't previously reviewed that there was, you know, older structures somewhere involved, then, you know, I do think we we need to be able to, um, to review an application. So I just, you know, I'm stating my uh, being a little confounded about this particular one. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Stephen, um, on those thoughts. Um, John. Yes, I would like to take uh, and have a motion that we hold this for viewing because the, this building is set back off the street quite a bit. And I'd like to get a frontal view of it all the way around from the public way. Okay. And yeah, that, that sounds that sounds like what um, Stephen was going for too, and Diane. So, um, and Carrie. Um, just looking at the photographs, I find it interesting that the front to back, these are almost two different buildings. Um, yeah. And what Holly said, taking that into consideration that some of this building could be a hundred years old, um, would be interesting to see, you know, the evolution of this building and to see if maybe some of that sways our decision making. I think it would mine. Um, and I'm happy to hold for a viewing as well. And okay. Look for I, can I make a motion that would be hold for a vision and, and more historic uh, information on the house? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'd like to know what what part, how it evolved. That would be very interesting. Amy, could you put that together for us, and we'll we'll go for a view. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Madam Chair, could we add, uh, if Diane would accept, just to include the minutes from the prior hearings? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, if we all deliberate, my thought here is, if it's been deliberated, I'd like to benefit from that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, long and. Hard deliberated. <laughs> okay, um, so on Diane's motion, which is for a view, historical reference, and notes, uh, notes from before. Uh, John, on Diane's motion. Aye. And Carrie. Aye. And myself. Yes. And Diane, on your motion. Aye. Uh, that passed. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Amy. Um, I'm an I too, just for the record. Oh, sorry, student. Oh, it's okay. And my A. Is Julie like your peaches, Carrie. Oh, my peaches. No. Or yeah. those those aren't apples, are they? Katie Trinkle legs. You can thank her. Ah, nice. The New Zealander now. Ah. She does does she do kiwi paintings? I thought you were getting fresh, Stephen. Of like course that. not. <laughs> my dear. <laughs> she makes bears too. I had several of them. Mm. She's a good artist. Yes. Um, do we Elizabeth see here? Jordan here for 28 years? Oh, it's Elizabeth O'Rourke. Is she here? Oh. Yes, I am. Hi. Oh, sorry. Hello. Yep, yeah, hi. <laughs> so um, this is an application for a, a small spa behind an existing house on India Street. Um, th this lot was big. It's where the, you know, there's a tree house on the side and it's been subdivided into three lots. So it's gonna get, you know, more structures, um, you know, from, from the neighbors. Uh, there's a lot of fencing, existing fencing around the property. So where we're putting the spot, you can't see it because it's got solid board fencing. Uh, we attached images of that. Uh, there's Rose Lane in the back, but it's, um, it's got a full board fence and a lattice on top. So standing there, you can't even see a person. Um, and we, you know, we tucked it in very close to the building. Uh, so you wouldn't be able to see it from India Street. Um, and, um, you know, we do feel a little bit of a sense of urgency because, uh, you know, there's been talks about spa changes in town. Um, and our clients don't want to lose the ability to, to have that for themselves. So we submitted this application back in November and finally getting before you today. Yeah, uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, 
Right, yeah, it's a little bit of a controversial issue at the moment. Um, I'll go. Uh, Diane, yeah, would you? Ma Madam Chair, I, I have comments. Oh, so sorry, I'm so, and I <laughs> wanna hear those, I just. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, I wanna mention, although this is a spa, um, there was no historic information referencing the property. So I wanna make that abundantly clear that anytime we have a non-structured uh, um, application like a SPA or whatever within the old historic district associated with the historic structure, I, I would really re respectfully request that historic information be provided. With that said, um, this is a circa 1834 to 1836 dwelling. Uh, it was built for David Baxter, who was a master mariner, built by the John, John Brown Coleman, John Bell Brown Coleman, um, also built 72 Main Street. You can actually reference the um, architecture and thank you to MPT and PIN for this historic information. And um, HSAB did take a look at this this week. They have no concerns about the gate that's proposed, but would like to know the proposed color and hopefully it's white or a natural. Uh, the spa is modern element within the whole historic district and will have a detrimental effect on the historic character and quality of life in the neighborhood. The voters of Nantucket and the neighbors have made it clear that pools are not wanted in the old historic district. A spa of this size is simply a small pool. Where is the pool equipment and what is the proposed outdoor lighting? Are other hardscaping changes going to be proposed later? Spa may be visible from Rose Lane needs screening from that side. From staff's perspective, I would concur. Yes, spas are um, controversial. I will mention that you're, it is quite not visible from India Street, but um, noting that this original lot is actually fronted on two lots. Um, it would be nice to know, uh, have a view of, uh, um, and, or photographs provided and or photographs of Rose Lane's um, visibility if, if it's visible. So those are the comments for your consideration, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Holly. Thank you. Can, I, can I respond to uh, a few things as there were some questions in there? Uh, you, you could, yeah, briefly. Um, okay, so, the, so the, the equipment would be going underneath the screen porch, which has a, a full skirt. Um, and it doesn't, it's, it's only a spa. It's not a swimming pool. It's impossible to swim in a 10 foot by eight foot length. I, you know, it's it's three and a half feet deep. There's benches, so this is not some something where somebody's jumping in or is you know got like the music blasting. It's really just a spa. So it's you know I just think it's wrong to call it a pool when it's close. But there's no lighting associated with this. There might be one little spa light on a dimmer inside, uh, but none are being proposed at this time. And, um, and again, I did provide photographs of all the fencing that's around. Um, and we took some photographs from Rose Lane. So you have those on the plan. They're attached with the application. That's all. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth, for that. Um, I'll go again. All right, Diane, go ahead. But could I get it over? Uh, the spas, the old historic district on a house that was built in 1853 is not appropriate. It is inappropriate. I don't think you'll find it a spa back in 1853. And I don't think you will find any spas that we have at least not seen that we have allowed in the old historic district. This is a house that's a hundred and some odd years old. And that's what I think. Um, and anything on the, uh, w there was a gate mentioned or something. A gate, if it's, it's a proposed gate, I think we should, there it is with the scoop top. Is that, is that hedge around the uh, gate yeah. new or is it existing? There's, there are some hedges there now. What kind of hedges are there now? Private. Privet. What? And how Privet. high? Mm -hmm. How high? Oh, I, I'm not sure. I can go through my images. But she's presenting eight foot high. Yeah, well, that's not appropriate on on India Street. The, I, but I uh, did, no, it's not eight feet on India Street. I, that's just a short gate. Please, would you let us speak? Yes. 
Okay. Um, all right, but that's uh, Elizabeth. That's it. It's the spa and the gate. Am I correct? That's it. That's yeah. All. Okay. Um, so uh, let's hear from Stephen. Oh, you had to pick on me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I can. Come <laughs> no, back. no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I, I mean, generally, I, I'm. I think the appropriateness of spas get dependent on their size and their location is typically inappropriate. Um, in the old historic district, um, again, if I probably said based on character and setting. However, I would like to just kind of, I'm also a stickler for like the record and getting things cleaned up. Um, and um, on this particular application for me to make an informed decision, I would need to understand a little bit better about the, uh, uh, through you, Madam Chair, Elizabeth, is this gonna be set at grade or is it in the, like in the picture gonna be raised with some step I don't know what the topography is behind this structure. At grade. Okay, so it'll be at grade. Um, yes. I think one of the comments was made about lighting and I know we don't ordinarily address lighting and I'm sure like flares are gonna go up around the island, but I think one of the things that happens um, as it gets dark is uh, these tend to be lit. Um, there is a character and setting question there. Um, it's not something we're gonna address for the historic district here today, or maybe even in the next three years, but um, that's a concern to have lighting there. Um, we were showing some images where the lighting goes in a pool or a spa and it turns the adjacent structures into um, kind of like uh, light show backdrops um, uh, as you see the light reflecting off of them. And that's a dramatic change to the character and setting of the historic district. So that's a concern. Um, the other thing is we, you know, we, we've approved these. I'm pretty sure there's a spa in the, at 26 orange, 38 orange or 40 orange, one of those two. Um, so, and, and this is not, you know, this is since I've been on, on the commission. So I think we need to be careful about that um, and, and try and leave it at the specifics of a particular application. I'm not suggesting to correct anyone, but I'm just saying with respect to the record, and with respect to appeals and with respect to process, I think that we need to stick to a particular application um, unless we vote a policy that is there are no spas allowed uh, in the historic district. Um, I personally would like to go and do a view on this. I'd like to get a better uh, 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 idea of the particular setting uh, I understand now that these have been divided into three lots where um, it's, a, it's a large lot now. And um, so I will be asking for a view. Mm, okay, um, thank you, Stephen. Uh, Carrie. Um, I agree with what everybody said. Um, I, feel, I feel like on the site plan, it's just sort of plopped down. It doesn't really relate to anything. It's, yeah. I. I also would like to see an aerial photograph of the immediate surround because we are in the historic district and it's hard to approve something like this when I'm feeling like there are none in the immediate surround. And to me, that lays a precedent. If there was one two doors down, then there's a precedent of allowing a spa right here. The fact that there's some on Orange Street and way up Main Street that's not this particular neighborhood. And to me, that makes a big difference. The historic nature of the house and the way it's situated, while it may not be visible, it still seems inappropriate and the size of it as well. Um, and the fact that it's sort of floating out there. Mm. And the subdivision, everything sort of makes a difference to this, to this thing. So seeing how it's subdivided, where it's subdivided, where it's visible, where it's not, all of that comes into play. So a view and some more information would be good. Mm. Very good, Carrie. Uh, John. Yes, my comment, I walked down Rose Lane and you get down Rose Lane and is a this was Walnut Lane there also. Uh, you can you get down Rose Lane and you look right into the backyard where the big tree is that has the uh, the kids' play yard built up in the tree, a tree house. That's where any Frank's property. And that's that's where it's visible from, from the backyard. Okay. 
Um, is that it, John? Uh, well, I, I, take, take the arrow there, okay? Bring it down right in the middle of the lot. All right, 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 go to where it says 108. Let me see here now. Wait I just lost it. Dang it. All right. All right. Randy Frank owns a monstrous White House, and I think this is the one. Because I only looked, I didn't look at it from the front. I didn't notice it. But that's that's the big tree house is right there to the right. Right, right of the 108. So I'm just saying it's it's, it's visible. So if you I'm take the actions, they should be taken from the visibility of it. Right. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, so there is an article. I mean, this is a sort of a sensitive topic, but uh, at the moment, uh, eight by 10 is actually considered a swimming pool because it's more than a thousand gallons. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I, his, his Madam Chair, have, um, you know, been against uh, pools, spas in the historic district. So, um, I'm going to stick with that. And um, can I make a motion then that we could? All right. I just could I just finish my thoughts? Oh, um, yeah. Sure. I, I, I agree with everything that's been said. I, I realize um, it does look a little unattached as well. And it's um, sort of the, the visibility is now been sort of um, questioned. So, um, I, uh, uh, Diane, uh, did, you. Is, would you like to make a, were you going to make a motion? I was going to make a motion that Donnie wants to view. Yeah. We try to do what our commissioners want as far as views are concerned. Yeah. So, so I would just leave it as a view because, uh, I can't make a motion. I would not make a motion. Okay. I don't care around it. I would make a motion to approve this under any circumstances. Uh, other other spas may be around or down Orange Street or anywhere else, but this is in the old historic district. And it is what has been brought up to us that we have to stand up for our for the surrounding area. So I'll make a I will make a motion for a view for Johnny. And Stephen wanted a view as well. Okay. Um, I, I, I've i seen the property, uh, but um, all right. So is that your motion, Diane, to hold for yep. a view? Yep. Um, okay, so on Diane's motion, uh, Stephen. Um, and I. Uh, John. Hang on just a moment, please. I'm reading something. Um, Rose Lane Realty Trust. Um, Industry. Uh, this this is in the old historic area, yes, and uh, it has nothing to do with the local law. They have it says no pools. That that that's nothing to do with the HDC. Okay, um, but we're, we're just on this motion, John. Yes, I'd like to see the application, please. The head of the application before I vote. Thank you. Let me see it yeah. here. All right, it's the 28 India Street Rose Realty Trust. Uh, could I go to the bottom of it, please? And we'll, we'll put four stakes in the ground for your viewing. Thank you. Great. Right. Um, uh, and, 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 on, and on, I just want to be clear that this is not a swimming pool. It's it does, the, for, for a swimming pool, like we're under the uh, 150 square feet of um, open area. It's, it's a depth. And it's a gallonage. The zoning defines it three ways. This is not a swimming pool. So what is the depth of this, Elizabeth? Three and a half feet, but it's got a continuous bench on, on the side. And that's two feet down. You, you cannot swim in this. It's impossible. It's, 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 it's the, yeah. OK, so um, but we have a motion on the floor. John. Madam Chairperson. I haven't finished yet, and I was interrupted. I was overtalked. Okay, now I'd like to go back to the bottom of the application, please. I sure hope this thing is signed. 
<clears throat> I know exactly where we're going. Could we scroll to the bottom of the written application, please? Okay, so John. Yeah, my yeah, my question is, who signed the application here? I did with my client's permission, which the, my client's permission is included in the application. Uh, okay, okay. I've noticed in the past very seldom, but when it happens like that, you check something and find out somebody else signed it without the uh, approval. Okay, thank you very much. I'm in favor of this for the vote of the view. Okay, so and um, gosh, now I'm losing it. Um, so Stephen said yes. John is yes. It's Diane's motion. Carrie on the yes, motion. I... And I'm in favor of the view. Okay, so that's where we are at, Elizabeth. Okay, thank you so much for, for all your time. Okay, thank you. Bye. Those are big peaches, Carrie. I mean, <laughs> hey, hey, we're going to view it, right? <laughs> How are we doing on time? Um, I think we're finished. Let me see. If you oh, can tweak it. one more, and I'm here for the Nine Hawk Circle. We're just talking, moving a door and two windows. Oh, okay. I think we can do that. It's 219. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, very simply, uh, this is a guest house at Nine Hawk Circle. Um, We've, you as you see where the clouds are, we've changed the south elevation to where there was one window and one door. And now uh, we're making two windows, which are looking out of the kitchen and moving that door to the small shed structure off the back. Uh, none of this is very visible, um, just for the sake that it, the property is pretty well protected or will be protected by a new privet hedge. Um, and then on the east elevation next to the big slider, uh, we just changed the size of that window um, from a double window to a single window, which actually cleans up that elevation a little bit. Mm -hmm. oh, very good. Um, okay, yeah, on this, oh, FAB? So this is in SAB's jurisdiction and they did review um, originally. They did not look at these changes, but I did uh, on behalf of obviously the, um, the advisor board is in, as well as for you all um, and I believe that these changes are um, um, an improvement and more symmetrical obviously with having the flanking windows changed um, so I don't see any concern um, I wanted to offer that for your consideration thank oh, you Monica. very good thank, thank you, you Holly for that um, others on this application uh, Steve why don't you go first yeah, I think the size of the windows is odd in that they're smaller than the windows in the gable on the second story, but I understand the internal programming is that this is a kitchen with a countertop. So, yep. um, and I'm also fine with the fact that not everything has to be perfect. So I'm okay with this. <laughs> okay, uh, Diane. Yeah, I don't mind it. It's, a, it's a, not a huge big house, it's small. And I think it will be fine. The, the front door, that is the front door, right on the, I can't see what. The lower left-hand corner is the front door. Yeah, the door in question is a side door. door. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. A oh, good, Diane. John. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 if you didn't have the wings on each side of it, on the, let me see, what is that? Right. No, go back to the left a little bit, a little bit more. The, the, all right, hold it right there, please. Yeah. If you didn't have these wings, it should be a duplicate of that garage up at there and on, up on uh, Prospect Street. We just went over with. So, anyway, uh, that's what it looks like to me. Anyway, the uh, the door on the main. No, that's not in the main ratio. What is that? I can't. Okay. That's unchanged. Okay, is that glass above wood or four Glass pen? above wood, yep. It's I'm a sorry. half light. But that, that's already been approved. We're not changing that part of the house. You're just doing the front of the house? No, it's 
what we're doing is a south elevation, which is technically the side, um, where we're just making an adjustment of moving this side door, which is a full French door, full glass door, um, and one window. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Carrie. I think this is totally appropriate. I appreciate the changes. Mm, thank you, Stephen. Thanks. Oh, Stephen went. Well, um, want to go again? <laughs> it, you did go, didn't you, Stephen? Didn't you say? Um, to approve is submitted. Yeah. Unless okay. you want to speak. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. Um, on the motion, John. What was the motion, please? Approve as submitted. I'm writing it down. Okay, yes, yes. Okay, very good. Diane. Yes. Carrie. Aye. Me, yes. Aye. Steven. Aye. Okay, we're good. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's see what time it is. 2.23. What? Okay. Um, Thank you. Should we call it a day? Motion to adjourn. I, I have one comment. Yes. I just wanted to clarify because there was some, uh, I've got a follow up from someone um, on the section 106. I, you, the HCC no longer has a section 106 rep. My term is, has been completed. So I just wanted to be clear that we're without a section 106 rep at this time. Oh dear. Okay. And the right. reason I mentioned is I don't see it on a future agenda. Uh -huh. We have. Isn't Holly in to do that? I put my name in, and John was going to talk to Ray. Yeah, I just mentioned it because I don't see it on a future agenda, and I just wanted to clarify so that we're all aware of it. Should we yeah. put that on the future um, agenda to be uh, dealt with? Madam Chair, we will put it on an agenda. Oh, yes. thank you, Holly. <laughs> Um, that way nope. you can make a motion to vote somebody in to replace Stephen. Thank you for that reminder, Stephen. Yeah, yeah no, no, good. no, no fingers or anything. I just wanted to make sure we had it somewhere. Yeah, very good. Um, so on yeah. John's motion, uh, Stephen. Aye. Uh, Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. Myself. Aye. Mr. Walsh, I'm home. Yes. John, is okay. it okay? I think we're adjourned unless anybody has a joke to tell or Christmas gifts to hand out. Oh, uh, just somebody get together the secrets analyst. That's all. Have a great weekend, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Bye. Thank everybody.